Coinbase, a well-known exchange, has filed for an interlocutory appeal in its enforcement case against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission AC in the SEC Binance Holdings Limited case. It does this because Judge Jackson recently ruled against the SECC in the Binance BNB case. Last week, Judge Jackson said that Binance's sales of BNB tokens on secondary markets do not count as stocks. This has made Coinbase wonder why different judges have different rules for how swaps should be regulated. The court where you are being sued or the judge who is in charge of your case shouldn't decide who is responsible. In our enforcement action against them, we sent Judge Jackson a notice earlier today, decision in the case against Binance, Paul Grohl, who is the SEC's chief legal officer for Coinbase, was completely ignored by this decision. The Tuktaxia show a big difference in how U.S. district judges handle cryptocurrency transactions. There were times when the courts had different opinions about whether or not similar deals were securities. These cases involve big trades. Gru Wall criticized the SEC's approach for regulating crypto as being based on lawsuits. He stressed the need for consistent legal standards and said that different courts and judges shouldn't have different rules. Earlier this year, in April 2024, they asked Judge Fila to stop the SSC lawsuit. They said there were strong disagreements about whether the Howey test should be used for deals in the secondary market for cryptocurrencies. Coinbase pointed out that the Howey test is not met by XRP trades on secondary markets in the Ripple V and CC case, which was decided by Judge Torres. According to Coinbase, this split among judges' opinions makes it hard to know what the laws are that govern cryptocurrency. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission replied to Coinbase's move by saying that Ripple's view on how to use the Howey test for sales on secondary markets has not been accepted by any court. Ripple has been at the center of both problems and new ideas in the industry. Its leaders have also been in the news a lot. From the ongoing fallout from the collapse of FTX to the legal battles over XRP and the launch of the new stablecoin rest, recent court rulings have led to both successes and more questions about how XRP should be regulated. At the same time, Ripple's planned addition of Rilu is meant to make XRP more useful in foreign trade. The recent order from the court for the Northern District of California greatly limited the case, leaving only a small state law claim about allegedly false claims. The main issue in the current legal dispute is whether or not XRP is a security. This conversation has a big effect on Ripple and the altcoin market as a whole. The decision in New California is good for Ripple, but it also makes it more likely that XRP could be seen as a security in some scenarios. And in his earlier decision in New York, Judge Torres said that XRP is not a security when it is sold to institutional investors. This view is different from that. Lawyers and lawyers, Mark Fagel and Fred Rispoli have both written about what they think these recent court decisions mean. Rispoli, a strong supporter of XRP, brought up the possibility that California law could change the meaning of securities in light of the court's decision. The statement shows how unclear and complicated things are when it comes to XRP's regulatory standing. The Court of Nine T's decision left open the chance that California law, but not federal law, could classify XRP as a security. As a security. He said Mark Fagel, on the other hand, gave a more complex view by drawing on his vast knowledge of the SEC. He talked a lot about how complicated it is to figure out whether or not XRP trades are regulated by securities law when federal and state factors interact. Even though California's use of federal standards, like the Howey test, changes how things are interpreted locally, Fagel pointed out that there are still some bigger effects for federal courts that are looking for guidance. The Howey test is used in California in a big way, but it doesn't always decide what happens at the federal level. The Howey test, which comes from a major Supreme Court decision in 1946, is one of the most important ways to tell if a deal is an investment contract and therefore a security. It checks to see if money is put into a shared business with the main goal of making money off of other people's work. One of the main points of Ripple's legal battles has been whether or not XRP meets these standards. When Judge Torres in New York said that XRP failed the Howey test when it was sold to institutional buyers, it was a big deal for Ripple. Ripple has a good legal case against the SEC now that this decision has been made. There were claims that it sold securities without being registered. The recent ruling in California, on the other hand, makes things even more complicated by suggesting that XRP may still be seen as a security in some situations at the state level. These legal problems could affect more than just Ripple and XRP. They could also affect the whole Bitcoin market. If XRP is found to be a security, it could set a precedent for how other digital assets should be regulated, which means they are looked at more closely and closely watched by regulators. Even though there is some relief from the ongoing legal uncertainty after Ripple's partial in California, there still needs to be more specific regulatory frameworks. The rules that govern cryptocurrencies are still changing, and the outcomes of these court cases will likely have an effect on how digital assets are positioned in the future. Ripple is still committed to its goal, even as it deals with these legal problems. 
Hey, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple has repeatedly stressed how important clear rules are and how important it is for laws to support innovation. The most recent court decisions show that Bitcoin regulation needs to be more complex. Monaco Long, president of Ripple, talks about how it works with XRP and the plans for the Ripple stablecoin community. In the meantime, Monica Long, president of Ripple, talked about the much anticipated Ripple stablecoin love and how it might affect XRP strategy in a recent podcast interview on The Scoop. Long's comments give us a general idea of how Roost will add to and improve the current XRP environment as Ripple continues to make new discoveries in the cryptocurrency field. Erlu, which is about to go live, is designed to work perfectly with XRP, especially to speed up trades between countries. This has been known for a long time. It has been made clear for a long time that Rulu is meant to work with XRP. Our goal is to make XRP work better in our payment solutions so that cross-border operations go as smoothly as possible. Utilizing the benefits of both Ethereum and XRP, Ripple wants to increase the number of users on the XRP ledger without lowering the use of XRP. In April, Ripple said it would join the $150 billion stablecoin market with the release of Rilluist, a stablecoin that is tied to the US dollar. This move is a major turning point for Ripple as it adds more products to its line. With XRP acting as a bridge currency, Ripple's on-demand liquidity product, which lets banks and other financial institutions settle transactions quickly, is likely to rely on the stablecoin a lot.